After World War II, the Tivoli circuit was again dominated by imported acts, and radio proved the salvation of many Australian performers. George conquered the airwaves with his national radio show, but the move was not entirely satisfactory. And how do you like this radio game? Oh, well, I mean to say, when you've been bred and born in vaudeville like I have, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not quite up to vaudeville. You don't get that spontaneous uh, response that you do from the stage, you know. George's final film appearance was in 1950, again as comic relief in the film Wherever She Goes, the story of Australian pianist Eileen Joyce. Look, I was just standing up there, that's all I was doing. She sneaked behind my back. One of just two films made in Australia that year, it did nothing to revive a stagnant film industry. Disheartened by the limited work options, George took a gamble. He booked a passage to England, knowing that this would be his last chance at international success. Here he is, a huge star in Australia, comes to England completely unknown, and a very sick man. He did his act at the Nuffield Centre. He did Sophie the Sword on the bus. Now, this was a sketch, of course, that relied so much on the Australian vernacular. You know, I'm a girl who likes refinement and culture and music. <laughs> I always try to act like a lady, speak like a lady, always be the perfect lady. I'm having a stink with a sailor in a fish shop the other night. <laughs> he died. Nobody came into the theatre, and those that did just sat there and sat in their, sat in their hands and didn't, didn't, didn't laugh or applaud. He left his run too late. He was sick, so sick. Don, my husband, you know, he said he is pathetic. That's what Don said. He's pathetic. That it's sort of like let him let himself down because he was ill. Because I don't think he'd ever been as ill as he was at that time. Oh, you know, he's always had this chest and his hemorrhoids. <laughs> and um, he he just said, I think I came the wrong time, mate. He went into uh, a sort of deep depression and illness in the hotel where he was staying. Helen Pavitt, who worked at the hotel, looked out for him to make sure that he ate properly and had medical attention. And he persuaded her to come back to Australia as his housekeeper to look after him. We visited him quite a lot at his home in Kensington. I used to go in with Mum and Dad and Jeff, and he was there with Helen. But all around the house, there was just hundreds of paintings, and they um, lined the corridors, and they're all stacked up in the kitchen and everywhere. And I loved his paintings. And uh, every time we went there and visited him, I'd go up to him and I'd say, Grandfather, can I run your paintings? And he'd say, come here, speak up. And he was really quite ill and coughing, and, but he still had a lot of humour. And I'd walk up to him and I'd say, can I have one of your paintings? He'd say, are you giving me cheek? And I'd say, no. And he'd say, bye, G. And he'd do this mock getting up off the kitchen. Bye, G, if you're giving me cheek, I'll get you. And I'd, the same rich, I'd run up the corridor laughing. And this went on every time we visited them. After a period of convalescence, George's luck changed. 